today, uh, I'm going to have a look at using the quiz feature on Brightspace to uh, use for exams. And because of the fact that it's online and timed, it just means that the students have a very fixed length of time to do the exam. But rather than giving everybody the same question, if we randomize the questions, it makes it uh, a little bit more secure, let us say. When I am going, before I do the exam, as I'm sure everybody does, I look at the learning outcomes that have to be tested for the exam. And I decide for each question, what's the learning outcome, okay? So from year to year, the learning outcome will be the same, but the question obviously will be different. So for this exam, I'm going to show you, I have three learning outcomes. Um, and three questions. Um, I used to do one mandatory question and then do three others, pick two. But I think because of the fact that they are online, they have an advantage anyway. So I put that down to three questions altogether. First is worth 40% and the other two are worth 30% each. So um, after I come up with this, I'm going to have question one, question two, question three. Then I decide I'm going to my assessments. So what I've done here is I went into quizzes uh, and said I wanted to grade. And there's a tab here that says you can grade questions. So I clicked questions and I clicked blind marking. OK, so what happens then is I go in and these are all the these are all the question versions that I had. OK, so I can pick an individual question and it will show me what the student answered here. OK, now in this case, I didn't ask them for a picture and I can also I'll tell you, one part of it. Yeah, so the first part of it shows me my sample answer. And the second part shows me their answer. OK, and I can mark that and go on to the next one. So you can answer each part question. So even though you have um, randomized the question, it will just give you all the ones that answered that particular random question. So anybody who attempted, for example, question one, yeah. um, that, it, should, it lists them all, I suppose, in, in whatever order you grade them and then Brightspace captures your the mark for each one of those. OK, now you hide. You hide the, the quiz from them. See, after they've done it because that, of the map, you don't want them to see the results. That, that, that's what kind of is on the back of my mind in case you just forget that it's not hidden and then suddenly they see whatever grade they they got, you know. So if you don't put it in as part of their grading system. Which I wouldn't have that it's not going to come up for them anyway. You follow, you know the way if you are doing a CA, you will put it up as part of their grading scheme and it'll say what they what uh, what they got for it. But I don't but isn't that, in this Yeah, part. but isn't that a situation where if, if they well if you're doing an assignment and they submit yeah. um, we have to enter in their grade and then hit submit that sends the grade back that you know they can view that particular grade for that assignment then so yeah. is it the same case then with the quiz where whereby we have to hit a submit button or something like that for them to see it there's a publish there's an update on the publish. right right okay okay but okay. even if you publish and they don't have it it's the quiz is hidden if you do two things hide the quiz and not put it into their um their CA, their grades. You know the grade section that they have. If they click grades, they can see the grade for anything that's been added to the grade section. But if you don't add it to the grade section, they can't see it. Okay, I see. Um, the other thing as well I wanted to ask was I I heard um, that they're they're due to the 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 I'm not sure how scalable Brightspace is, but when there's a huge load on it, my concern would be in the middle of a test. It, it falls over a little bit and I've heard that we have to contact LTTTC to for them to either restart or you know do something at their end. Has has that ever affected anybody here 
who's who's done these quizzes before for the semester one exams or or semester two exams last year? Hi, Michael. This is Bianca here, and um, I just wanted to say something about that particular point because I've run the quizzes quite a bit in the past now. And fall over, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but what can happen is that the um, that students um, that stay stuck, it seems to be staying stuck in a question and then students can't click next or anything like that. And because I usually have my questions one per page and backtracking disabled, um, that is an issue. However, when they close the browser and start the browser again and start the quiz again, they will be where they were before. So as long as the student is within the time that you have set for your um, quiz, students are always able to go back in and they will be sent to the uh, question where they were. Now, the if you have a question from a question bank, that will also restore, it keeps the original questions that were sent to that student, so it doesn't start fresh or anything like that. It's all saved, which I think is good. But the thing is, students, the main thing is why students get um, upset when that happens is they haven't read the student guide that is provided by Brightspace about the quiz. So if you're planning on doing quiz, I would really recommend that you kind of beforehand drill it into them that first of all to read it, but secondly, if something like that happens and they're still within their time to close the browser, start the browser again, log in, you will be back to where you started. And then there is another thing the submission of the quizzes seems to require of the students to click submit twice. And I have so, so this kind of like a submit and then are you sure to submit or something? Then you have to click again. And um, I have had students only doing the first click and not and then stopping to read. So that will show up for you. You can go in afterwards and it will be recorded as a quiz still in progress. So you can actually retrieve all of those instances and just go in. Um, you can go in. There's different options here because obviously you would like to have it um, the way that you can have it done in the grade book as well. When you put in grades that you'd only like obviously not for an exam, but if you were using it for like a CA or something, then you could use it as well for the grades. So then you have to get it out of that limbo area of um, quizzes in progress. So you can log in uh, and say you finish it on behalf of the student. So you're logging in. So there's a designated path when you log in to get these out of that state and then you can grade it as normal. But um, I think with this, it's more important to tell the students beforehand because they get very upset, especially in an exam, if suddenly, like, I don't know, it freezes and the freezing seems to be something that happens quite common. Right. Thanks, uh, Bianca, okay, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's great to know. I've never experienced it, thankfully, in a quiz. And uh, I have had 80 students doing a quiz at the same time, but I, I'd say it's possibly true around exam time. The other thing uh, I usually do is I give them a sample question that's literally from the example that I use in my notes and say this is what you're going to get and this is the way it's going to look. So they know what the questions are going to be and they know what the answer is, but it just gives them a little bit of confidence that they're going to know what to expect. That's a great idea Patricia, one of those sample things so they're it's not new to them on the day of the exam so they know what to expect. Yeah that's a really good idea actually. Yeah I like that. Patricia, that's great. No, I mean, you've, you've definitely given me a really good idea now. You've certainly whetted the appetite there to, to use the quizzes for the upcoming exams because, um, yeah, I was thinking about it and I was looking at the video that Brian had placed on the, the site that Paul uses, you know, that um, Bianca, thanks a million for sending that link again. Um, so, yeah, that kind of gave me an insight. But your, your, what you've shown us is how to do the, um, the randomization, how to put the pool together. I like that as well. As you said, it kind of, let's say, mitigates, it, mitigates the chances of them probably trying to collaborate or 
copy of each other in the in the time, you know. So I yeah. just wanted to mention that there's also on the Brightspace own website there's um there's guides for this and they have all of these um guides for randomizing and so on. So there's actually lots of teacher help. If you look on the Brightspace, I don't know, they call it bite size or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they actually have for quizzes both for students and for lecturers lots of guides on how to set these things up and how to control things. I think what we like is to control how students look at things and especially when you get the once you randomize them and things like that you kind of want to know how does it look like and what can the students see after submission and things like that so there's lots about control in those guides the other thing is as far as i'm aware well it is true you could uh, even within a section i think you can randomize so my questions i have the whole question uh, and they answer every part of that question but if you wanted to further uh, up the, the range even further you can have randomization within the question. Yeah just the, the word there on that I, I kind of went a little bit too much into the randomizing and then if there is a query during the exam like if it's a proper exam then maybe it's not there's not but with you in a CA I was getting questions and it's like question 17 and you don't know so careful with that because it can be a little bit of a problem um yeah. i was having problems with the graph right. sorry well, yeah sorry i just want to say you can actually go in and see exactly what the student sees if you go into filter by quizzes and progress but you have to filter for those it's not a view that is given to you just like it like you have to search for them you search for the student uh, you can see quizzes in progress. So if there was a quiz in progress, you can filter for those in progress. But this in progress is not a, the default. The default is either submitted or started mm. or something like that. So you want the in progress and then it shows you all the quizzes in progress. And then you can filter for the student and you can look inside what they're doing. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that would have been very useful to know before because yeah, it was a little bit of a nightmare. Um, I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but yeah, it's something to bear in mind. So that's very useful. And one other thing I was going to ask, um, did and probably what you were showing us, Patricia, gets rid of the problem. I had problems with some of my diagrams, um, oh. images not showing for the students. Like I could see the question and I, the diagram was there, but oh. then they couldn't see it. I wonder, am I play with the the options you were showing us to make the boxes big and so on uh, the, the html okay. rendering yeah. yeah yeah very useful thanks okay uh, are there any questions or anybody about it or comments uh, patricia quick question for you yeah have you done or you did, did you do all of your exams like this last uh, yeah. last year no. Did you do some of them is like upload a Word document exams as well. Yeah. So, and for just your experience of both, like, did you find it was easier to do the bright space or less work or more work? So, uh, as far as setting up that exam is concerned, if you have had years of exams, you have loads of questions. So, once you sort of get into the zone and do it properly, um, you'll load up the questions reasonably quickly. And also, it's much quicker to correct mm. because you're, the way I always did it with the old paper ones is I would correct all question one and then all question two. Whereas I find that a lot more difficult to do with the, the sort of offline exams because yeah. you're, you're downloading a whole paper. Right. Follow. So overall, you think a little bit of work up front, but then less work in the longer term. I do think so, yeah. All right, cool. Good to know. Okay. I think I've only uh, scheduled this for half an hour, so I think it's going to stop. I don't know, do these stop? But uh, yeah, it may stop pretty shortly. No, so well, if you're on Teams, I think it just keeps going. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. So does, are there any other questions or comments?
no, Patricia, that's great. Thanks so much for okay. showing us that. That's really useful. Yeah, it's really good to know. Okay. So I suppose that's it then. And uh, we'll all get together again on Thursday uh, for our forum.